So, in the last lecture, we discussed about the RC phase shift oscillator and we have derived the expression for the frequency of oscillations and the condition for the gain to sustain the oscillations. So, today we will discuss uh, another audio frequency oscillator called as a Weinbridge oscillator. This is also another type of RC oscillator where the feedback circuit consists of R and C elements. So, the circuit diagram of this Weinbridge oscillator is So, this is basically a inverting amplifier unlike the RC phase shift oscillator where the amplifier is non-inverting amplifier. So, this is a non-inverting amplifier unlike uh, the RC phase shift oscillator where the amplifier is inverting amplifier. This is output, this is RF, this is R1. Basically, the signal here will be amplified with a gain of 1 plus RF by R1. The gain A will be 1 plus RF by R1. So, this will provide 0 degrees phase shift because there is no minus sign. So, the feedback network, if I assume that this output voltage here is Vf. So, this feedback factor beta is given by the input here is V naught with respect to ground. Beta is V f by V naught. So, I am going to derive the expression for this one. So, this also should provide 0 degrees phase shift. So, that overall phase angle will be 0 degrees and magnitude you have to make as unity. This is the condition for the sustained oscillations. Now, here there is one RC section in series, another RC section in parallel here. So, we have to uh, nullify the phase angle provided by this RC section by this parallel RC section, so that the overall uh, resultant uh, phase angle will be 0. So, why the name uh, Wine Bridge? So, if you want to write the equivalent circuit of uh, this, this is equivalent to a bridge type of circuit. Here the output is taken. Here we will take 4 ohms of the bridge. This is R1, this is RF, this is series RC circuit, this is parallel RC circuit.
and this point will be grounded. Here the output V naught is taken. So, these two circuits are same this and this. We can see that at the positive terminal, so one edge will goes to series RC, another edge will goes to parallel RC, this is parallel RC. And from this output of the op amp, we will take the output V0 and the other end of this output will goes to RF, this is RF, whereas the negative terminal will goes to R1. So, these two are same. So, in order to get a zero phase shift in the feedback path, we have to balance the bridge. In the sense, this R1 will provide zero phase shift, RF also provides zero phase shift. If this provides phase shift of phi, then this parallel RC section has to provide the phase shift of minus phi, so that uh, these two will be get cancelled then the bridge is said to be balanced. Okay, that is why the name wind bridge oscillator. So, you can take either of the circuit to uh, derive the expression for the frequency of oscillations. So, what is the gain of this amplifier A is equal to 1 plus R f by R 1 okay. and what is beta V f by V naught. So, from this circuitry what is uh, V f in terms of uh, V naught? V f is equal to V naught into R in parallel with 1 by S c is this impedance divided by. So, this impedance will be total impedance this will be R plus 1 by S c plus R in parallel with 1 by S c. This is series combination, this is parallel combination. We are taking the output voltage across the parallel combination so that V naught into parallel combination impedance divided by the total impedance. Series combination impedance plus parallel combination impedance. So, what is R in parallel with uh, 1 by SC? Is equal to R into 1 by SC divided by R plus 1 by SC. So, this is equal to SC, SC will get cancelled and then uh, SRC in the numerator 1 plus SRC. So, if I substitute this here, what will be Vf? Vf is equal to V naught into the parallel combination of R with uh, 1 by SC is SRC by 1 plus SRC. This is SRC by 1 plus SRC divided by R plus 1 by SC series combination plus parallel combination is SRC by 1 plus SRC. Again here this will becomes SRC whole divided by SC. This can be simplified as 1 plus SRC divided by SC. Now, again here the LCM is SC into 1 plus SRC. So, this will be equal to V naught into SRC by 1 plus SRC is the numerator. Denominator will be, so this will be reverse as SC into 1 plus SRC will be in the numerator. Denominator will be 1 plus SRC whole square plus S square or C square. So, if you further simplify, so this 1 plus SRC, 1 plus SRC will get cancelled and the numerator will be Vf is equal to V naught into S square or C square divided by S square R square C square plus 2 SRC plus 1 which is SRC plus 1 whole square plus S square or C square. Okay, is it correct? So, V naught into 
एस आर सी बाई वन प्लेस एस आर सी इज न्यूमरेटर डिनोमिनेटर विल बी एस सी इंटू वन प्लेस एस आर सी डिवाइड बाई वन प्लेस एस आर सी होल स्क्वेयर प्लेस एस स्क्वेयर आर सी स्क्वेयर सो देर फॉर बीटा इज इक्वल टू वी एफ बाई वी नाट दिस इज इक्वल टू एस स्क्वेयर आर सी स्क्वेयर डिवाइड बाई एस स्क्वेयर आर स्क्वेयर सी स्क्वेयर प्लस टू एस आर सी प्लस वन प्लस एस स्क्वेयर आर सी स्क्वेयर सी नाट टू फाइंड आउट द फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ आसिलेशन एस शुड बी जे ओमेगा एफ एब्सट्यूट एस इज इक्वल टू जे ओमेगा हियर बीटा बिकम्स एस स्क्वेयर बिकम्स जे ओमेगा स्क्वेयर विच इज इक्वल टू माइनस ओमेगा स्क्वेयर माइनस ओमेगा स्क्वेयर आर सी स्क्वेयर डिवाइड बाई माइनस ओमेगा स्क्वेयर आर स्क्वेयर सी स्क्वेयर प्लस टू जे ओमेगा आर सी प्लस वन माइनस ओमेगा स्क्वेयर आर सी स्क्वेयर Now this uh, R parallel with one by S C will be R in parallel with one by S C will be R into one by S C by R plus one by S C. So which is equal to S C will get cancelled. So we'll get R by one plus S C R. So if I substitute uh, this value here and uh, here. And if you simplify this expression for V F, so what will be this V F now? V F is equal to R by one plus S C R V naught into R by one plus S R C divided by R plus one by S C plus R by one plus S R C. So if we take again LCM as one plus SRC into SC, what will be this? This is equal to V naught into R by one plus SRC divided by here the denominator is SC into one plus SRC is LCM. So this will be R into R by one, so we'll get both the terms. S C into one plus S R C plus one. Here S C is there, so it will get one plus S R C one into one plus S R C plus R one plus S R C is there, so we'll get S C. So this will be V naught into R by one plus S R C, and if we take this into numerator, this will go to numerator. This will become denominator. So S C into one plus S R C divided by. So it is the denominator. This is S R C into one is S R C plus S R C into S R C is S square R square C square plus one plus S R C. Plus SRC. So this one plus SRC, one plus SRC will get cancelled. This is equal to V naught into SRC divided by total three SRC. S square R square C square plus three SRC plus one. So in place, what is beta? V F by V naught. This is equal to SRC divided by S square R square C square plus three S R C plus one. This is the expression for the beta. Now, in order to derive the expression for the frequency of oscillations, so we have to make the uh, imaginary part of beta equal to zero, similar to the analysis that we have uh, done in R C phase shift oscillator. So, in order to obtain this real and imaginary part, we will replace S with J omega. So what happens to S square? 
j square omega square which is just simply minus omega square. So, if I substitute this here, so what will be beta j omega rc divided by minus omega square r square c square plus s is j omega 3j omega rc plus 1. So, this j if I take to the denominator becomes minus j. So, this is equal to omega r c divided by minus j times minus omega square r square c square plus 3 j omega r c plus 1 or this is equal to omega r c divided by this minus j into minus becomes plus j, j omega square r square c square and this minus j into plus j becomes minus j square which is equal to plus 1 plus 3 times omega r c plus this becomes minus j. So, what is the imaginary part and what is the real part? W r c divided by real part is 3 omega r c plus imaginary part is j if I take as common omega square r square c square minus 1. For sustained oscillations, what is the condition? A is real, so beta also should be real. implies imaginary part is 0 means omega square r square c square is equal to 1. Implies what is the frequency of oscillations? Omega 0 square is equal to 1 by r square c square or omega 0 is equal to 1 by r c or f naught is equal to 1 by 2 pi r c. This is the expression for the frequency of oscillations of Weinbridge oscillator. So, at this frequency of oscillations, what will be the value of beta? Beta is this. So, this becomes 0 and this omega r c becomes 1 from this omega r c is 1. So, if you substitute that, so this omega r c is 1. So, what happens to beta? This is 1, this is 1 and this is 0. So, 1 by 3 into 1 is 1 by 3. So, implies beta is equal to 1 by 3. But we know that for sustained oscillation modulus of a beta should be greater than or equal to 1 implies modulus of a should be greater than or equal to 3. So, what is a is equal to 1 plus r f by r 1 should be greater than or equal to 3 implies r f by r 1 should be greater than or equal to 2 3 minus 1 is 3 minus this 1 implies r f should be greater than or equal to twice r 1. So, these are the two design expressions to design the Weinbridge oscillator. This is second type of uh, RC oscillator. So, these RC oscillators are suitable for uh, audio frequency applications. So, for radio frequency applications, we have to uh, go for the uh, LC oscillators. There are two types of uh, LC oscillators similar to the RC oscillator. One is called call pits oscillator and the second one is called Hartley oscillator. So, before going for this call pits and uh, Hartley oscillator, first I will derive the uh, expression for the generalized uh, 
L C oscillator. Then I will substitute the values of this uh, impedances in case of uh, call pitch oscillator, in case of Hadley oscillator. Okay. First I will take the generalized L C oscillator. So, the circuit diagram of a generalized L C oscillator is this is also type of uh, inverting amplifier. So, the feedback path here will be consisting of three impedances. Later, I will replace these impedances with L and C elements so that we can derive the Carlpitts and Hartley oscillator. Carlpitts and Hartley oscillator. So, here the output V naught is taken and this is V f, a part of this output will be fed back to the input. And this will call as Z 1, Z 2, Z 3. This is R 1, R f. So, the gain of this amplifier is Rf is equal to minus Rf by R1 into of course this voltage. Okay. This is nothing but Vf. So, in order to derive the expression for the frequency of oscillations, first I will draw the equivalent circuit. So, in the earlier lectures uh, we have discussed the internal circuitry of the operational amplifier. Okay. So, that is nothing but here we will be having input resistance then there will be a output resistance, there will be a voltage source, this will be grounded, this is minus plus, if I call this as terminal 1, terminal 2, this is R i, this is R naught, A v is this a voltage gain into V 1 2, this is the output voltage. Now, here if I assume that the operational amplifier is ideal, R i will be infinite. And in the equivalent circuit for the sake of simplicity, I will just not uh, show this R 1 and R f. So, what will be the equivalent circuit of uh, this, this operational amplifier? We are going to uh, replace with this equivalent circuit with R i is equal to infinite means this will act as open circuit. This will act as open circuit here. So, the equivalent circuit will be now, if I call this as a terminal 1, and this as terminal 2, this as terminal 3. So, terminal 1, this is connected to the ground, this is connected to this point, then there will be no connection between this terminal 1 and uh, this point except for that here this ground. So, there will be a voltage source with the ground, this will be your terminal 2, this terminal 2, this is minus plus, this is A V times V 1 2 and this is output resistance, this output resistance R naught and this will be connected to this point, this is terminal point 3. So, where this is connected to Z 3, Z 1 and then Z 2. So, this overall this one will be grounded and here of course, we will take the output. This is Z 2, Z 1, Z 3. This is R naught this is terminal 1 and 
this point will be connected to here you see here this one will be connected to here so a center point between z1 and z3 so this is the equivalent circuit okay now this will be your vf with respect to the ground this will be v naught so beta is nothing but vf by v naught so what is vf in terms of v naught v naught into this is v naught between this point and this point there is a voltage divider so we are taking vf across z1 so z1 by z1 plus z3 implies vf by v naught is equal to beta this is equal to z1 by z1 plus z3 this is one expression then what about this output voltage v naught so the overall gain will be here this is v naught and this is v12 so overall gain av is given by v naught by v12 okay. so in terms of uh, v12 what is v naught first of all so this v naught in terms of this v12 so you can see that this voltage av into v12 is the total voltage between this point to ground this ground also of course and there is a resistance here and there will be parallel combination of this and we are taking this output across this parallel combination so let this parallel combination as zl zl is equal to z2 in parallel with z1 plus z3 this entire circuitry this you are calling as zl then what will be equivalent circuit so here this is voltage source minus plus this is grounded this is av into v12 av into v12 and this is r not now this will be total zl this is also grounded this zl is this this is r not and here we are taking output v not so what is v not is equal to this is minus and because plus c is grounded so this is of opposite polarity minus av into v12 and we are taking the output across zl means zl by r0 plus zl okay so this is if i substitute this zl also here a becomes this a if i call this overall gain as a this is v not is the output voltage v12 is the input voltage so v not by v12 from here v not by v12 will be your a that is equal to minus av times this v not by v12 is equal to minus av times zl by r not plus zl here zl is z2 in parallel with z1 plus z3 this is equal to z2 into z1 plus z3 divided by z1 plus z2 plus z3 if i substitute uh, this here in place what is a minus av times this is z2 zl is z2 into z1 plus z3 divided by z1 plus z2 plus z3 is the numerator this zl whole divided by r0 plus again zl is same thing z2 into z1 plus z3 divided by z1 plus z2 plus z3 so if i take z1 plus z2 plus z3 as lcm in the denominator so that will cancel with this one so you will get this as minus av z2 into z1 plus z3 divided by r0 into z1 plus z2 plus z3 plus z2 into 
z1 plus z3. This is your A expression and beta we have derived as z1 by z1 plus z3. So, A beta is equal to 1 for oscillation the condition is So, implies A is minus A V times Z 2 into Z 1 plus Z 3 divided by R 0 into Z 1 plus Z 2 plus Z 3 plus Z 2 times Z 1 plus Z 3 into beta is Z 1 by Z 1 plus Z 3. This should be equal to 1. So, this get cancelled. So, we will get A beta is equal to now minus A v times Z 1 Z 2 divided by R 0 into Z 1 plus Z 2 plus Z 3 plus Z 2 into Z 1 plus Z 3. Here Z 1, Z 2, Z 3 are the uh, impedances. Okay. So, this is of the form of Z d is equal to J omega L R 1 by J omega C. So, what I will do is I will call this Z 1 as J x 1, Z 2 as J x 2, Z 3 as J x 3 where x can be omega l or 1 by omega c minus because j we have taken the numerator so this will be equal to minus j by omega c. So, j if I take as common it will be 1 by minus 1 by omega c. So, the x we are going to substitute later either omega l or minus 1 by omega c depends upon the, the type of uh, impedance that we are going to obtain. Now, by substituting these values here, what is A beta? Therefore, A beta is equal to minus A v times Z 1, Z 2 means J into X 1, J into X 2. J into X 1 into J into X 2 divided by R naught into X 1 plus X 2 plus X 3 means J if I take as common then this will be x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus we have z2 into z1 plus z3 z2 is jx2 z1 plus z3 is j also common here so this becomes j square x1 plus x3 so this j square is minus 1 and this j into j is also minus 1. So, this minus minus becomes plus. So, this will be now a v x 1 x 2 divided by what is the real part and what is the imaginary part minus x 2 times x 1 plus x 3 is real part plus j times r naught into x 1 plus x 2 plus x 3 is imaginary part. But for the oscillations A beta should be real. Implies imaginary part is 0. This is 0 means x1 plus x2 plus x3 is equal to 0. This is the condition for the oscillations. If x1 plus x2 plus x3 is 0, what happens to a beta? This term becomes 0 and what is x1 plus x3 from this? x1 plus x3 will be minus x2. So, if I substitute this minus x2, minus minus becomes plus. So, a beta is equal to a v into x1 x2 divided by x2 minus x2 into minus x2 becomes plus x2. This x2 x2 will get cancelled. We will get this is equal to A v into x 1 by 
next two. Then modulus of a beta is greater than or equal to 1 implies a v into modulus of a v into x 1 by x 2 should be greater than or equal to 1 okay. implies x 1 by x 2 should be greater than or equal to 1. These are the conditions for the oscillations. Now, we will substitute here this z 1, z 2, z 3 with either impedances or capacitances. Thereby, we will get this Carlpitts and Hartley oscillator. Okay. So, Carlpitts oscillator first. Carlpitts oscillator can be obtained by uh, replacing uh, x1, x2 with capacitor and x3 is inductor. So, the corresponding circuitry will be this. Here the output is taken, this is grounded. Here in the feedback path, you have two capacitances. And this point is grounded, then there will be a inductance. This is the feedback network, this is LCC R1 RF. So, x 1 will be minus 1 by omega c. If I call this as c 1 and c 2 for example, this x 1 is omega c 1, x 2 is minus 1 by omega c 2 and x 3 is omega l. If I substitute this, what is the condition for the oscillations x 1 plus x 2? plus x 3 should be 0 implies minus 1 by omega c 1 plus minus 1 by omega c 2 plus omega l is equal to 0. So, what is omega l? 1 by omega c 1 plus 1 by omega c 2. This omega you can take as common if you take to the other side implies omega square L is equal to 1 by C 1 plus 1 by C 2. This is equal to C 1 plus C 2 by C 1 C 2 or omega square is equal to 1 by L times C 1 plus C 2 by L times C 1 C 2 or what is omega square root of c 1 plus c 2 by L times c 1 c 2. This we call as frequency of oscillations implies f naught is equal to 1 by 2 pi square root of 1 by 2 pi square root of c 1 plus c 2 divided by L times C 1 C 2. If I define the equivalent capacitance as let uh, C T total capacitance is C 1 C 2 by C 1 plus C 2. So, then this F 0 becomes 1 by 2 pi root L C T. So, this becomes this becomes 1 by C T. So, here C T is this. This is the expression for the frequency of oscillations. Okay. Now, what will be the condition on the gain? 
so here modulus of a v should be greater than or equal to x2 by s1 so here this expression should be modulus of a v should be greater than or equal to x2 by x1 what is x2 what is x1 x2 is this x1 is this so should be greater than or equal to minus 1 by omega c2 divided by minus 1 by omega c1 so minus minus get cancelled omega get cancelled so modulus of av should be greater than or equal to c1 by c2 this is another condition so subjected to this condition the frequency of oscillations is 1 by 2 pi root l c t so this is the frequency of oscillations of uh, call pits oscillator and the other type of lc oscillator is called hartley oscillator here this is reverse x1 x2 is inductors and uh, x3 is capacitance This is the circuit diagram of Hartley oscillator. This we call as L1, L2, C. So, what is X1? Is omega L1. X2 is omega L2. X3 is minus 1 by omega C. And the condition for the oscillations which we have derived is X1 plus X2 plus X3 should be 0. Implies omega l1 plus omega l2 minus omega c should be 0 or omega into l1 plus l2 is equal to 1 by omega c or omega square is equal to 1 by c into l1 plus l2. So, therefore, frequency of oscillations omega 0 is given by square root of 1 by c into l1 plus l2 or f naught is equal to 1 over 2 pi square root of L1 plus L2 into C. Let Lt is equal to L1 plus L2. If I assume that there is no mutual inductance between L1 and L2 or if I assume that mutual inductance also there L t is equal to L 1 plus L 2 plus 2 m. The m is mutual inductance. Then what will be frequency of oscillations is 1 by 2 pi square root of L t into C. Here L t depends upon the mutual inductance L 1 plus L 2 or L 1 plus L 2 plus 2 m. This is the total inductance of two inductors connected uh, in series with mutual inductance of f and what is the another condition modulus of a v into x 1 by x 2 should be greater than or equal to 1 or modulus of a v should be greater than or equal to x 2 by x 1. So, this is greater than or equal to x 2 is omega l 1 x 1 is omega l one x two is omega l two by omega l one omega omega get cancelled so modulus of a v should be greater than or equal to l two by l one so with this condition we will get the frequency of oscillations as one by two pi the resultant inductance times the capacitance so here are the two types of lc oscillators so normally this will be used to design RF frequencies of the order of megahertz. So this is all about this uh, sinusoidal oscillators which can generate the sinusoidal signal whose frequencies 
this. We can generate uh, the rectangular waveform, triangular waveform also that we will discuss in the next lecture. Thank you. Thank you.